but they were one of my favorite bands for a long time. I like Rush. No, I love Rush too. I, I think got Rush no is a great Rush. band, and I love bands that sound like Rush. <laughs> Sticks and Stones have never before sound, sounded to me like Rush, um, but this this single was recently found, and I've got to say, I think that song definitely evokes the, uh, the, the Rush arena rock. Some Gettyisms. Some Gettyisms. <laughs> The uh, the thing is though now that song had keyboard if I'm not mistaken did it well I, I that must have been that that arena ish swirling well see the thing is with the sticks and stones they had keyboards on their second seven inch and I thought they did a damn good job with it I mean, they this did is, a great this job this was in like it. 1990 or 1991 or something when this when the record came out but this was their final seven inch it was called cynical and it came out just a couple years ago right 1994 on the uh, Chunksaw record label which is I believe run by one or more bouncing souls. Um, and and it's cool that I think I believe they had the keyboards back, or at least they had the swirling keyboard effect back in. No, stock. I liked it. I thought it sounded great. The second Sticks and Stones album is called uh, The Optimist Club, and I still have never seen it or heard it or heard it because I believe there's only 500 copies of it, and it's a, on a German label. Yeah, that's one of the I think the most sought Hey You Kids records, yeah. or the record one of the records that is most sought by us. Right. Of Hey You Kids. Um, so if you ever see it and you don't really want it yourself, then please buy it for us. Or if any of you New Brunswick people are listening, and I know some of you are, and you have a copy that you don't want, we'll or pay the know, big money for know it. know where we can get one. That's right. Uh, anyway, that song was called Cynical. Before that, uh, Request Music for Pet UFO. A song called Muffler from their My Name is Esther Cohen record, which was their second album, and it was on Double Deuce Records. Actually, I guess the first album was more a, a compilation album kind yeah, of thing. It was like all their seven inches on one CD. Um, but I guess soon after this record came out, their singer just split, and they got a new one, but I don't think... I have a feeling that they didn't take to her too well, because mm. we have heard nothing from them since then. And that's like going on two years ago, I think. Yeah, that was quite a while ago. But uh, but they put out a couple of great records while they were, while, while they were active. That's right. And uh, the Pixies before that, also by request. That was Gouge Away. I haven't heard that in a long time. And I, was, I started jumping up and down, shrieking, it's more Boston music, but Jen's getting tired of me saying that, so... Yes, I'm I am. Just, <laughs> I'm not going to pursue it any longer. Uh, that was from the Doolittle album, their, I guess, third official record. I have no idea. That was the last good one, though. That was the last one that I really liked, I think. Yeah, me too. I think that's when I saw them, actually. That's I when think, I saw I them. I think it might have been the Doolittle tour. Yeah, it was one of the times <laughs> I saw them anyway. Um, that was on 480 Records. And uh, we had Flipper for that. That was Ha, Ha, Ha. From oh, you know what? What's that? I just remember something. What's that? I saw this really cool Pixies 10-inch box set today. Oh, was that the 4D? Because I saw a wedding present one that was on 4D. I think it was on 4D. Anyway, it, it was like fifty dollars, and it's five Pixies ten inches or something. But it's but beautiful. what's on it? Is it like new stuff or? I have it? no idea. I just thought I'd mention the fact that I saw it and it looked really cool. All right. Okay. Anyway, uh, Flipper doing ha ha ha. That's from the Sex Bomb Baby compilation LP, which is uh, also a collection of singles, I believe. And No Means No at the top doing the 1997 version of Big Dick. When was the? When did the? I believe the, uh, the 1990 version would have been the earlier one. That okay. was from the wrong LP. But uh, yeah, this new EP is uh, hopefully a teaser for a new album. Um, it's called Would, Would We Be Alive, and it comes out on Alternative Tentacles Records. And I love that new version. I think that's awesome. It is great. Especially when they all start just screaming. and, and <laughs> Well, it is a good aerobicizing song, too. That's right. Uh, in any case, it is 11.32, and you are still listening to WPRB in Princeton. We are Jen and Mike, and we are Hey You Kids, Get Off My Lawn. And we'll be here for another hour and a half, taking requests at 609-258-1033 or 609-258-1233. Those are the WPRB request line phone numbers. And we have some request music right now for Jawbreaker. This is from their first album. That was called Unfun. Minus Lock and Lol Band. It's not very nice of you to keep making fun of their mispronunciations. I'm hardly making fun of them. I wish I talked like that. <laughs> they sound so cool, and they look so cool on the album cover. The band is Guitar Wolf, Japan's finest leather-jacketed punksters. Now that Teen Generate is no longer with well, us. Oh, yes, clearly. Who may have been reincarnated in Guitar Wolf. Actually, Guitar Wolf's been around for a long time. Yeah? Yeah, this is like their fourth album. Uh, actually, fifth, I think. Really? Yeah, they Did this come out primarily on Matador, or was this released elsewhere first? No, this is completely on Matador. Because they had another one, Missile Me was on Matador. And right. Then they had two on Bag of Hammers, and then they had one on a Japanese well, label. Oh, so, but all the other ones were on American labels. As far as I know, That's yeah. That's pretty entertaining. What I can say is that this 
CD that I hold in my hand is the third Guitar Wolf record in WPRB's library. Yay! And that's all in the space of, what, like six months? No, uh, well, Missile Meek didn't come out that long ago, but uh, the other ones were a while back. Anyway, it's great. That's, that's all you really need to know. That song was stuff. called Planet Heart, and the album is called Planet of the Wolves. Uh, before that, we have request music for The Descendants. That was I'm the One from their latest record. <laughs> Milo on vocals. That one is called Everything Sucks. And it came out on Epitaph Records. Home of, like, like everybody. geriatric punkers. It's home of everybody these days. And the Cramps, the... Who else on it? The Dickies? No, that's Fat Records. Dickies are on Fat Records. Oh, they're on Fat? Oh, yeah. that's right. I sort, of, I sort of glued those two labels together for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. They seem to have sort of the same mentality. Like just the no effects connection. I don't know. I don't want to talk about them. It doesn't really make any difference, does it? No, not at all. We had Girl Trouble before that. Something from a 7-inch on Wig Out Records. The name of that song was Homework. Fine yeah. band. Also been plugging away for a number of years. Yeah, that's one of those bands that's that's so legendary and everybody seems to know their name but I couldn't tell you the name of one of their songs with the exception of this one that we just played. <laughs> I'm just really not familiar with them at all. I don't know, it's just like, it's estrus music. And it sums it up pretty well, I guess. That's pretty good. I like it. That's yeah. what I'd say anyway. The Cheater Slicks did a song called Dignity and Grace. That's from a new double LP or double CD, if you prefer, uh, called Forgive Thee. That comes out on In the Red Records. And you're, you're seeking that one. I am. It's not often that I will run right out and buy a brand new record and pay a lot of money for it, especially a double album, which is going to cost me a few extra dollars. But uh, I was just so excited about it. Um, I, I need to own me a copy of that, but I still haven't done it. It's actually it's one of my favorite records of the year, I think. They're from Boston. There's another band. They've, Boston again? God! Um, they've been going for years, and um, hopefully this will get them some recognition. They have an album on Sub Pop, I think. Really? I think so. I think they were on Sub Pop for some period of time anyway. Um, but yeah, it's great. Just sort of, I don't know, I can't really describe it. It doesn't really sound like anybody. It's just very plain, sort of rootsy rock music. But I like it a lot. I like that rock and roll music. Yeah, the rock and roll music makes me happy. It's not bad. happy to be alive. It's okay. Uh, Pegboy did a song called Dangerwood. That is from their brand new album called Cha-Cha D'Amour. And I was having trouble figuring out what the hell Cha-Cha D'Amour meant and realized that the, the singer of that band's name is Larry D'Amour. Or I, c I can't think of any other way that you would say that. D'Amour? D'Amour? Demores. Demore. Demore. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it comes out on Quarter Stick Records, and it sounds pretty good to me. Mm -hmm. yeah, most of their stuff so is pretty solid. Yes. They haven't disappointed yet. That's right. We had uh, two uh, quick ones from the replacement before that. That was Customer and Careless, both from the Sorry Ma Forgot to Take Out the Trash LP, their first one on Twin Tone Records. And they're supposedly, speaking of double CDs, there's this replacement's double CD that's supposed to be out or coming out. I haven't seen it yet. We don't have it here, but it's. I think one CD is like a greatest hits, and the other one is like, you know, the traditional outtakes, alternate version, never before released. I wonder if every band just sort of anticipates being famous and puts aside a couple, <laughs> their, a couple songs. Yeah, that ever, or, or it's all the songs that they thought were so awful that they didn't want to put them on albums. But you know, if there's any band that did that, and I know it'll happen sooner or later. If it hasn't happened already, because I don't really follow them, but the Beatles. I mean, because those guys were Outtakes. so... No, 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 no. I mean, like, they probably have, like, ten albums worth of songs that could have been number one hits that they've never recorded. But don't the Beatles have an album come out, like, every year? Well, I don't know. I mean, this is really at my department. I mean, I like the Beatles and everything. I have some of their records, but I'm not, like, a religious Actually, it's funny. We were life. talking about this this before, this outtake situation, and discussing how the coolest band that that could happen to would be Husker Du. And they've yeah. never had one. Yeah, well, there the thing is... There have been a couple live records with a few weird tracks on them, but there's never been, like, a, an actual issuing of an album full of outtakes and side things and what's weird about them too is that even while they were around they weren't a band that was really on a lot of compilations i mean they just pretty much stuck to putting out their own records which sort of leads me to i mean they're on like the blasting concept and that john yeah. giorno thing but other than that and all the, and those songs i think were all appearing elsewhere too weren't they or well the blasting concept ones did yeah. yeah but uh yeah i know i sort of wish that would happen now i've you know, an album worth of, uh, you know, Zen Arcade era stuff that Unfortunately, I, released wouldn't really... I think all those guys hate each other so much that they probably yeah. wouldn't get together to do that. Um, it's sad, but we can still dream. I can right. hope. <laughs> <laughs> you won't deny us that, will you? <laughs> um, we had King Fates at the top from their new 7-inch on Akashic Records. That's a label run by... Uh, Mark from King Face and a guy from Girls Against Boys, and it's also a publishing company. They've published three books, I think, to date. A uh, new one called The F Up. Uh, which is... Which we think was written by Mark no, Sullivan. No, it actually wasn't. I oh, went back wasn't. and checked, and this is actually written by another guy. But yeah, Mark has written two of the books. 
Um, one's called Jonas's Ghost. I don't know. I haven't read any of them, but they sound pretty. Are cool those anyway. two out yet? I didn't think his were his were published yet. Maybe not. I could be wrong. But they were coming out soon. Maybe that's the case. Anyway, keep an eye out for the the F up. It's apparently I don't know, it got a good review somewhere, didn't it? Uh, please say so, yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, I don't, I don't know cool, really anything about it, but it's kind of neat. It's a cool thing, you know, like putting out books and music together, it's encouraging a little bit of literacy in this otherwise, you know, idiot infested <laughs> music scene. That's um, right. <laughs> like us. It's 15 minutes before 11 o'clock, and you're listening to WPRB Princeton. This is how you kids get off my lawn with Jen and Mike. And we'll be here till 1 a.m. The request line number is 609-258-1033. That is also the number where you can enter our little contest that we've decided to throw as yes. of five minutes ago. We've just cooked up this little contest. Playing Guitar Wolf sort of uh, prompted this, and also the slew of Guitar Wolf 7 Inches that came in the mail today <laughs> prompted us. We need, to, we need to give them out to you. You people need... You need some rock in your inches. house. All right. First, right. first of all, you have to have a turntable because this is a seven inch, which right. means it is vinyl and it will not play in a CD player. And uh, that's 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 the prize, or that's part of the prize. It's part of the prize. The other half of the prize is that you'll get a copy of the new issue of Green Means Go, which is our fanzine. It's 88 pages. Got King Face, Dismemberment Plan, Emery Swank. And damn, is that worth a lot? Yeah, you know it. Um, but anyway, <laughs> you got to answer a question. You can't just call. Now we'll take the first two callers. There'll be two winners in this contest. Okay, and the thing you have to answer is we're going to play this next song by Stiff Little Fingers. It's a song called Go For It. And what you have to do is you have to call us at 609-258-1033 and explain to us in just a few words what the significance of this song is to WPRB's history. And it's besides the fact that all of WPRB loves Stiff Little Fingers. That's, right. that's, that's a little too obvious. It's very that specific. That is not part of the contest. Right. The youngsters may not remember this one. This is more, I guess, geared towards the old timers. But don't feel slighted. We'll come up with an easy question for y'all at some other point. But anyway, you have to call in, tell us what little bit of specific history this Stiff Little Fingers song, Stiff Little Fingers song holds for us. Okay? You can also call in your request. Right. The number is 609-258-1033. Like, so we got two Guitar Wolf 7 inches, so we'll be giving them both away to the first two callers you can call and correctly answer the question. So without further ado, this is Stiff Little Fingers.